Today's video will discuss chapter 6-4, proportional and non-proportional relationships. And so in this particular part, or in this particular lesson, what we are going to focus on is just determining first whether it is or is not proportional. And so proportional means that it is going to increase or decrease by a constant rate, right? And so the idea is not so much that there's a pattern, right? And so a lot of people see this pattern where it's going up by three. And that is important, but that's not what makes something proportional and non-proportional. I'm going to show you that example in just a second. What makes this relationship proportional is that if I think of this as the x variable and this as the y variable, I can either write these as x over y, right? And each of these fractions is equivalent. So one-third equals two-sixths which equals 3 ninths, which equals 12 fourths. Or I could write it the other way and put it as, so this one was x over y. If I wanted to write it as y over x, I could write it as 3 over 1, 6 over 2, 9 over 3, and 12 over 4. Now some people see this one a little bit easier because this is, this is equivalent to 3, 3, 3, and 3. Keep in mind that these are 1 third, 1 third, 1 third, 1 third. Either way, each of these is equivalent so to, the, to the next. So as it goes up, or if you come back this way as it goes down, each fraction would be equivalent. Now, the other way that some people are being are taught whether or not something is proportional, is a proportional relationship must go through the point zero, zero. Now, I don't necessarily want everyone to fall in love with this method, but the idea is that if this is going up by three, if I were to come back another one, right, so this is, if it's going up by three, this way it's going down by three, right? So if I were to take this one and I would go down by three, this would be zero. This one is going up by one. So if I'm going back this way, it's going down by one. So if I were to take this back one, this would be at zero. So the idea is that if it goes through the point zero, zero, then it is proportional. So this is proportional because these are equivalent and it's going through zero, zero. Now, let's take a look at a different example. So this one would be one that is non-proportional. Don't want to give away the surprise, but it is. So one thing that people see is that there is still that pattern, right? This is going up by 20s, and this is going up by 1s. So a lot of people, if you come back to this one, we, were, we saw up by 3, up by 1, people say, yes, it is proportional, but that's not why, right? Because this one, which we're going to prove in just a moment, is non-proportional, has that same pattern. So the idea is that if I were to go x over y, 1 over 50, does not equal 2 over 70, which does not equal 3 over 90, which was, does not equal 4 over 110, right? And so the idea is if I were to reduce this, this would become 1 over 35, this would become 1 over 30, these do not equal 1 over 50, right? Or if you look at it the other way, 50 over 1, right? Because a lot of people deal better with whole numbers, 70 over 2, 90 over 3, and 110 over 4, this is equal to 50. This, 70 over 2, 70 divided by 2 is 35, 90 divided by 3 is 30, so you got 50, 35, 30, this is not equivalent, or not proportional, sorry. Well, these are not equivalent, thus making it not proportional. The other idea, if you come back to the thing we had talked about in the last one, these are going up by 20. So if I'm coming back the other way, it's down by 20, which means if I take this down 20, this will be at 30. These are going up by one. So if I come back this way, we're going down by one. I take this back one, it's at zero. So I'm now at zero 30. It's not at zero zero. So because it's not at zero zero, this would be non-proportional. All right, so that's identifying the difference between proportional and non-proportional. Now let's take a look at how we might use this in a problem. So the idea is that the cost for two and a half pounds of meat is $7.20. 
write an equation relating the costs to pounds mm -hmm. of meat. And then we're going to use that equation to figure out how much four pounds of meat will cost. So in order to figure out how much, or to write this equation, what I need to do is do a unit rate, if you remember from the lesson before. So we're going to figure out how much does one pound of meat cost. So to find one pound of meat, I would need to go 720 over 2.5 equals something over 1. Right? And so to get there, I'm going to have to divide this by 2.5. So we need to divide 7.2 or 7.20 by 2.5. And if you take a calculator, you're going to find out that that is $2.88. So I know that one pound of meat costs $2.88. So if I want to write an equation for this, the cost would equal 2.88 times the pounds of meat. So if I were to buy one pound of meat, it would be 288. Two pounds of meat would be something else. And two and a half pounds of meat, if I were to put a 2.5 in here, would be 720. Now the question is, how much does four pounds of meat cost? So to find four pounds, I'm going to take cost equals 2.88. I'm going to multiply this times four. And 2.88 times 4 is $11.52. So if I wanted to buy 4 pounds of meat, it would cost $11.52. All right, that's all we got for you from this section. Sorry, it was kind of a close-in, huh? Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to do the problems on the bottom of the page. I'll see you in class.